It is a Tuesday prospecting day for the Phoenix TT Peers. As you can see, everybody here is making calls. It is amazing. We're literally pulling deals out of the air. It's so exciting. I just want to kind of bring you around. I want this to kind of be more, um, you know, documentary than, than stage. So just come see the real life. So they are literally making calls right now. How'd it go? That was pretty good, man. The guy wants 75,000, so I sent it in. You should probably have a Spanish speaker talk to him. Okay. Because I was trying to explain to him, because he wants to list it with a realtor for 75. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to explain to him, like, why don't you take it? You can pay all the closing costs and the realtor commissions. You don't have to worry about that. Yes. Because he's got to move out of state. Of course. So, so yeah. let's, tell me about the house. Is it a house? It's a house, yeah. It's a 2 1. It's, a, it's on Central in Avondale. Okay. And uh, he said he has rent to pay right now. He's making 700 a month. But he doesn't want to deal with anything. He has three houses listed right now. Why does he want to sell? Because he's got a house. Uh, uh, I thought I just gave her the bird and walked away. Yeah. Well, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just like, <laughs> the bird. I don't want to make you look bad. That's awesome. Good. As much as I wanted to. All right, good. Keep going. All right. Get some more leads. Yeah. Hey, you still, Get some more. You still want me to use huh? For Cruz? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just looking for the owner of 14118 um, Alto Street in El Mirage. Oh shoot, okay. I'm sorry. I know this might sound weird to have the wrong number, but do you happen to have any properties you would consider selling by chance? Uh, <laughs> I wish you did too. <laughs> Alright, thanks man. I appreciate your time. You have a good one. You're all exciting having everybody in here making calls. It is just amazing. Come in here and make the calls in here. I know we're getting too loud, so we gotta we'll, we'll keep it confined in here because we Alejandro and I have to run to a appointment. So we've got I'm here on an actual appointment. Uh, haven't been on an appointment in a while because usually my acquisition managers go on the appointment, but my acquisition manager, Julie, is in New York, so she asked me to come and uh, meet with this homeowner. Now, with the four pillars of pre-qualifying that we always talk about, condition of property, timeline to sell, motivation to sell, and their price, this homeowner, we know that it has been a rental for a while. It has not been upgraded. So it's probably a cosmetic rehab. We're going to find out here in a second. Two, timeline to sell. She is ready to sign a contract today with somebody, but we've got competition. She had another investor over here just five minutes, 10 minutes ago. So I'm going to try to pull out and see what they offered her. And uh, her motivation is she just doesn't want to be a landlord anymore. She's tired of it. She doesn't have the money to fix it up. The only thing we don't have is the price. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to see if I can get the price out of her and see if I can get it locked up. I'll tell you how it goes after we go on this appointment. So this is real life. It's right there. You can see the house. You can take a look, go ahead and pan over there. And, um, you know, th th this is, this is a, um, awesome, uh, appointment. Um, she was very guarded. Uh, on the countertop, she had like the realtor.com printout of comparables, which is very rare for us typically when people are wanting to sell properties that need a lot of work. Because this house needs a complete remodel on the inside. Flooring, paint, I mean, they had smokers in there for eight years. Um, the trim around the windows were all destroyed. The back door was destroyed. It needs exterior paint, needs interior paint, needs new bathrooms. It's only one bathroom, so that definitely limits uh, the value of the property or the max value of the property um, because you know the pool of buyers for one bathrooms is much smaller than two bathrooms um, but she was she was really nice and upfront I mean she was very guarded when it came to what price she wanted but I kept asking questions kept pulling it out found that she considered that if she fixed it totally fixed it up which is an option for her, she would sell it for between 175 and 180 and then she explained that obviously you know investors have to make a profit and then she would have to you know she would minus the amount that it would take to fix it up plus all the costs it would take uh, all the costs that would come out from commissions and closing costs and title uh, this woman was savvy she was not uh, somebody that um, that was unfamiliar with the sales process she knew what earnest money was she wanted to make sure it was going through title she wanted to have her attorney look at the contract these are all fine things and not typical but they're things that we're very comfortable with 
Um, but I was able to pull out. So from that, if 175 is her bottom line, minus 6%, minus maybe 2% for the tie up for the escrow cost. I was trying to piece together what she thought it would cost for the repairs. I'm thinking she's thinking in her mind between 30 and 40 K it's realistically more like 40 K. Um, and she'll run into that. So if you start backing that out and you put in a profit there, I'm kind of getting into a number that I think that she's looking for. She wouldn't really show me she wants uh, three different offers from three different investors to see who's going to give her the best most clean offer and the person that she tr trusts the most so I'm going to go back to the office and break down the numbers we're going to figure out if it makes sense either way we're going to give her an offer based on um, me looking at the property and knowing the numbers and we'll go from there so wish us luck we'll lock it up thing I do want to mention about negotiating with the seller is she without a doubt was not going to make a decision today or sign a contract she has it in a trust and her husband has to sign on it and he's in New York till December it's a defense mechanism that she's using to make sure she doesn't get um, kind of uh, pressured into signing a contract which is fine uh, we would never want to pressure anybody I don't know about our competition but again there's two other offers on this so uh, let me ask you this question. If I were to give her an offer today, what do you think would happen to it? If I left her with a written offer, what do you think would happen when uh, the other two investors have not given her a number? She would leverage my offer every single time. If I came in at 100,000, she would without a doubt tell the other ones that we they had to beat it. And all they'd have to do is beat it by $1,000. So she wants all the offers by noon to noon tomorrow. We're gonna communicate, I'm gonna have Julie call her and really try to pull out and see what offers she already got. If it's far and above what we can do, then we won't even wor worry about it. But if we're close, then it can be something that we can negotiate and really uh, figure out, you know, if we're just a little bit over the other offers, then we will we'll win that deal. So, extra tip there.